Welcome back to Nucleotide Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss, at least in humans, the degradation of purine nucleotides. And by purines, we mean IMP, GMP, and AMP. We sometimes may not consider IMP, but there's actually going to be quite a bit of that in the cell at any given time, not as much as GMP and AMP, but we are still going to have some IMP. So how are all three of these nucleotides degraded? Let's actually start with um, AMP. All right, let's talk about the pathway and at least get down towards xanthine right here. So AMP is first going to be, react with this enzyme called 5' nucleotidase. 5' nucleotidase is going to hydrolyze off the 5' prime, uh, phosphate. Okay, Remember that AMP, I'll go back to this, but AMP, which is shown right here, has a 5' prime phosphate. So this enzyme, 5' prime nucleotidase, is going to remove that, and so all you'll have is a hydroxyl group at the 5 position on the ribose ring. Okay, And that gives you basically just adenosine. Now, adenosine deaminase is going to deaminate the, uh, the amine atop the six-membered ring of the adenine uh, nitrogenous base. It's going to essentially do this reaction right here, except you won't have the phosphate. So the adenine nucleotide will have this NH2 removed, and it'll instead be replaced with a carbonyl. And that's going to be characteristic of inosine. So inosine, first of all, doesn't have that phosphate, okay? And inosine can actually be degraded further by a nucleosidase, and that's going to actually remove the ribose ring, and all you'll be left with is the nitrogenous base. Just this, the purine base, which is actually called hypoxanthine. Now, while we're up here, IMP, which remember IMP actually has um, this phosphate, okay, IMP is actually this molecule right here, IMP can actually also react with the 5' prime nucleotidase, which, as, as I just mentioned, removes the 5' prime phosphate. So if you remove the 5' prime phosphate from IMP, you're just left with the ribose ring and the, uh, and the base up here, which is inosine. And I already mentioned that inosine will react with the nucleosidase, which essentially hydrolyzes off the ribose ring and leaves us with the free base, which is called hypoxanthine. And you may not be used to seeing that because we don't really have a lot of this floating around the cell at any given time. And then hypoxanthine will react with an enzyme called xanthine oxidase, which actually has some implications in gout. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, some pharmacological implications um, in the next video. So hypoxanthine will be converted into xanthine. All right, so let's stop there, and let's go back up and look at GMP degradation. It's going to start off the same way. So GMP degradation, GMP is going to react with, again, the 5' prime nucleotidase. That's going to remove the 5' prime phosphate from GMP, giving us guanosine. But if you look at guanosine, um, guanosine already has a top the 6 membrane. It already has a carbonyl. It doesn't need to be deaminated, at least at this position. So uh, we're going to go straight to the nucleosidase and hydrolyze off the ribose ring. And all we're left with now is the free base guanine. Now, we do need to remove this amine group from this corner position of the six-membered ring. That's catalyzed by the enzyme guanine deaminase. And so it's essentially going to replace this amine with a hydroxyl group, and that's going to be xanthine. Okay? So really, regardless of whether we're talking about GMP, AMP, or IMP, all three of these purine nucleotides, their degradation pathways converge at the formation of xanthine. Okay? Now, let's pick up from xanthine. You could, in some ways, consider this a final common pathway. So the xanthine oxidase from this side of the pathway converts hypoxanthine into xanthine. But xanthine oxidase also has a second activity. It also converts xanthine into uric acid. So notice what xanthine oxidase is doing here. On the five-membered ring, this carbon atom between the two nitrogens will actually receive a hydroxyl group. And this molecule down here is called uric acid. Okay, Uric acid. Um, sometimes in one form of it, you'll actually hear it referred to as urate, um, but uric acid is the acid form of this molecule. All right. Um, now, well, uric acid is known to be 
a, the cause of gout. We're not going to talk much about gout in this video. Um, we have a separate uh, couple of videos on that. What I am going to talk about is that uric acid is actually the end product of purine metabolism in humans. Now, pyrimidines in humans, such as C's, U's, and T's, they can actually be degraded pretty much down to nothing, okay? Um, and we'll see that in a separate video. But in humans, urate or uric acid is the end product. And the reason it's the end product is that this next enzyme, urate oxidase, which would further degrade uric acid, is actually not functionally present in humans, okay? Many other organisms, so lower level primates and pretty much everything else, they have this enzyme urate oxidase, but somewhere supposedly in human evolution, uh, we actually got some mutations in the gene encoding urate oxidase, and it renders the protein product completely non-functional. And so we cannot degrade uric acid any further. Now, there's a couple things I want to mention about this. Now, obviously, humans live a very long lifespan relative to most organisms. If you consider most organisms, like dogs, cats, they may be lucky to live to 20. Um, parrots, like birds, may live into their 30s and 40s. And then humans have been known to live past 100. And actually, one of the reasons that humans are presumed to live such a long life is actually because of the protective effects that actually having a lot of uric acid uh, gives the body. So if you think about the inability to, to degrade uric acid any further, we must have a lot of uric acid in our body. And that's not a bad thing unless it's gout. The good thing is, is that because uric acid is not degraded further in humans, um, it either has one of two functions, either just gets excreted by the kidneys, or it ends up in the blood where it functions as a very powerful antioxidant. In fact, one thing that I want to mention about uric acid is it is actually assumed to be the number one contributor, the, as a molecule, the number one contributor to antioxidant power in the blood. Most people would assume it's something like vitamin C, and vitamin C does play a big role, but vitamin C actually has less antioxidant uh, function in the blood than uric acid. Vitamin C is number two. Uric acid is the most important. And part of the antioxidant function of uric acid, its ability to scavenge for free radicals, is, is um, proposed to be part of the reasons why humans actually have such a long lifespan. After all, there is a free radical theory of aging. So now let's talk about uh, why the urate oxidase protein in humans is enzymatically inactive or functionally inactive. Well, the gene is actually transcribed. So we actually do have an mRNA for the urate oxidase gene. Now here's what the urease, urate oxidase gene, uh, its mRNA, would look like in, let's say, a bird, an animal that actually possesses a functional enzyme. We would expect alternating exon, intron, exon, intron, and so on and so forth, right? We know that introns are going to get spliced out, exons are going to get put together, and we're going to have a functional mature mRNA, right? There's a few different mutations that have actually uh, arisen in the urate oxidase gene in humans that are pretty consistent. Um, and I got this actually straight off of Wikipedia, but... I see no reason not to trust it since it's cited. There's actually two nonsense mutations in the urate oxidase gene. What a nonsense mutation is, recall, is it's a, gene, it's a mutation in a gene where the resulting codon encodes a stop codon. Okay, that's what a nonsense mutation is. Instead of having a normal amino acid, you actually encode a stop codon. And so those are at codons 33 and 187. So if, if you were to actually get the protein, they'd be much shorter. So this third one might be the, the stop codon put at number 33. This one might be the stop codon put at 187. But again, if you're putting in a, a premature stop codon, you're going to end up with a... a, a a truncated protein that is probably non-functional, and that's if it's even translated. But one of the other problems with the urate oxidase mRNA is that it has a mutation in one of the splice sites. So remember that uh, remember that uh, mRNAs have to be spliced in humans and eukaryotes. The introns have to be spliced out because introns do not end up encoding amino acids. So there's a splice site mutation which prevents proper splicing of the mRNA, and as a result of that it is translationally inactive, okay? Um, so we do, tr we do transcribe the gene, but we really don't see any protein. And even if the protein was made, it would be way too short to have any function. And so overall, urate oxidase is not degraded any further in humans. Okay, so I wanna just make that perfectly clear. So in us, 
This is our end product. Now again, with diets that are very, very rich in purines, um, and particularly very inflammatory diets, um, you tend to have a high buildup of uric acid. And I won't go into too much detail here, but uric acid actually has the potential to crystallize with other molecules of itself. And those crystals will sink to the lowest possible places in the body since they're not soluble in water. They'll sink, just like sand and water, and those places are usually the knees and the toes. And it's very painful, and that condition is called gout. All right, other animals can degrade this further, and in the next video, we're going to look at that pathway and see how different animals actually excrete nitrogen. And we'll find that other animals will not usually do it as uric acid. Okay, so please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hopefully you learned a little bit about purine degradation. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.